Hello everyone. Welcome to our uh, today's tech talk. Happy testing from choosing a tool to learn tricks in work. Let me introduce you myself. My name is Gohar Ahmetova and I'm today moderator of this tech talk. And uh, let me introduce you uh, our speaker, Yulia. Uh, hi. Uh, hi, hi. Yes, and uh, I'm going to say that uh, please, if you have uh, any questions about IP or testing, functional testing, please uh, write in the chat and we will try to answer for all of them. Please uh, uh, write in English because uh, you have to understand and uh, each other. So uh, thank you in advance and uh, you, yes, you can start. <laughs> okay, that's all cool. Um, hello guys, uh, happy to be here again with presenting this tech talk about app testing. Uh, let me introduce myself. So, uh, just a moment. Okay, so uh, my name is Yulia and I'm middle software testing engineer in EPAM. I uh, have almost two years in software testing. I have an experience in manual testing as well as in automated one. I have great experience in app testing and also I'm um, a tech talk speaker. So uh, let's see our agenda for today. Uh, first of all, we'll discuss what uh, is API. We'll discuss what is API testing and why it should be tested. Uh, we will discuss main tools for API testing, how to create a first request, and then we'll in the uh, almost in the end we'll discuss uh, main life hacks in API testing, and then you'll have a chance to ask any question about uh, functional API testing. So should we start? And um, so first of all, let's discuss what is API. Um, so first of all, API is a mechanism that enable two software components to communicate with each other using a set of definitions and protocols. For example, uh, the weather bearer software system contains daily weather data, right? And uh, the weather app on your phone, like, kind of talks to the system via APIs and shows you uh, like daily weather updates on your phone. Uh, what does API stand for? So API stands uh, for Application Programming Interface. In the context of APIs, the word application refers to any software uh, with a distinct uh, function. Like, uh, interface can be thought um, of as a co contract of service between two applications. This contract defines how the two communicate with each other using requests and responses. Let's discuss how do APIs work. So API architecture architecture is uh, usually explained in terms of client and server, right? So the application sending the request is called like the client and the application sending the response is called this, uh, uh, the server. So in the weather example, the bureau's weather database is a server and the mobile app is a client and they communicate with each other, uh, sending requests and response. So uh, we have uh, several different ways that APIs can work depending on when and uh, why they were created and we will discuss uh, this a bit later. So here I have a scheme for you how API works. So you can see here that uh, we have uh, a web app in browser, we send a request to the internet, then it goes exchange here. Like uh, API is enabled to explain how web application communicate with each other, they process data transfer between systems and allocate between the application and the web server. APIs enable access uh, to software or web data right uh, in a controlled and secure way uh, for the program uh, then the code uh, sends a request to the receiving software and returns the data back okay if we go for next one so here we have uh, these uh, waves like uh, these apis right uh, ways 
so first of all is uh, SOAP APIs. So such APIs use simple object protocol, uh, access protocol, sorry, uh, client and server exchange messages using XML. This is a less flexible API that was more popular in the past, but still used, right? Uh, still, uh, we can find uh, such APIs uh, in uh, uh, software. Uh, WebSocket APIs is another modern way uh, web uh, API development that uses uh, just objects to pass data. Um, WebSocket API supports two-way communication uh, between client uh, app and the server. So the server can send callback messages uh, to connected clients, making more efficient even than REST API. And last the most popular and the most flexible API, this is REST found like uh, on the web today. Yeah, uh, so the client sends requests to the server as data. The server uses this client uh, input to start like internal functions uh, and returns output data back to the client. Uh, so. Uh, for, for for example, for our project, uh, like for my project, um, in detail, we use a REST API. OK, so here, what is API testing and why it should be tested, right? So API testing is a type of uh, software testing that involves testing API directly and as a part of integration testing to check whether the API meet, uh, like, uh, expectations in terms of functionality, reliability, performance and security. And uh, here are some uh, API testing types. Um, but before we start this, uh, let's let's see what, what is the main focus, right? Uh, what, what is the main focus in API testing, right? Uh, like making multiply requests to API endpoints for formant testing, uh what else we can check uh like we can write unit tests for checking business logic and functional correctnesses uh, security testing is also highly important here uh by like how can we do it uh, by simulating system attacks right and here i uh posted some important uh like testing types in api right so first of all definitely functional testing right um, like um, it evaluates uh, the responses in terms of accuracy of output, whether it lies within expected parameters uh, and how errors are handled. Uh, unit testing uh, more for like uh, developers, right? Uh, like a tests that are written to like automatically run with every build of the application. And uh, it's a, a highly uh, recommended to write like uh to test api or uh, while you're writing unit tests yeah uh load and performance uh testing is like uh one of the non-functional uh, uh type of testing that is most often or uh, most often uh overlooked and will most often cause trouble like load testing is very similar to performance but uh, but instead of creating uh, like spikes in traffic, we want to uh, emulate a constant steady stream of traffic at a normal expected rate. And uh, this is to ensure that the APIs do not contain memory leaks or other similar defects uh, that might cause issues after kind of, uh, running for a prolonged period of time. Uh, security testing, uh, this practice ensures uh, the API implementations is secure from external threats, right? Um, security testing also includes additional steps such as like uh, validation of uh, encryption methodologies and uh, of the design of the API access control. It also includes user rights management and uh, authorization validation. 
Integration testing, it focuses on exposing faults uh, in the interactions uh, between uh, APIs. So this test ensures the APIs are well connected um, and can communicate with each other flawlessly. Um, for example, if to talk about uh, my project, we have tons of uh, different uh, integrations, for example, uh, docs and between learn and uh, people from learn, they go to docs and back. Uh, so it's highly important here to check integration that everybody uh, that everything uh, works as supposed to. And uh, let's discuss API testing benefits. So um, API testing is uh, time effective when compared to UI testing. So API tests, uh, uh, it's like uh, if we talk um, about automation, it requires less code, so it can provide faster, better test coverage. Um, API testing can um, help us to reduce the testing cost. With API testing, we can find minor bugs before the UI testing. So these minor bugs will become bigger during UI testing, so finding those bugs in the API testing will be cost effective like to the company, right? Um, <clears throat> API testing is quite helpful in testing core functionality, so we can test uh, the APIs uh, without a user interface. In UI testing, we need to wait like until the application is available to test the core like functionality is a waste of time. Why do we need it? We don't need it, right? <laughs> so uh, uh, we check uh, uh, everything earlier and uh, uh, due to the fact that API testing can be performed uh, once the logic, logic layer is ready and before the final stage of work. Uh, what else? Uh, easier test maintenance, right? Uh, it's much more stable then UI tests, which change every day. It can also be implemented quickly. So um, faster time for fixing bugs, I think. Um, if the API test result is bad, it helps uh, to diagnose where the problem in the, is in the system, leading to faster like bug detection and fixing and final like user is happy. We fixed. <laughs> okay. Um, also, if we talk about uh, scaling rate of API testing, I uh, like I did by myself. Uh, so API testing is 25, 30 uh, times faster than the corresponding like UI testing for the same application, and I just checked it by myself like and said by, uh, to myself like wow <laughs> yeah lots of benefits um what else api testing is language independent uh, and extensions uh data using xml or json which enables you to use any programming language for like conduction of the api test and uh, what else? Uh, I think that uh, API te testing can be speeded up considerably, leading to significant cost saving as well. Whew, yeah, so uh, as you can see, uh, tons of benefits, and I uh, predict uh, that everybody like will go, will run to the project and say like, let's do API testing. So, but before you do this, uh, let's uh, see on what layer we need to complete it. So when API should be tested, as you can see here, we have three layers. Yeah, so uh, if we start from uh, the uh, like low part, uh, this is a data, like a database layer where schema tables uh, uh, triggers are tested. Then we have our uh, like logic, like business, or application logic layer, how we call it, where API testing is performed. And only then we have UI, like presentation layer or front end, we 
call it, uh, where functional testing is generally conducted. As you can see, uh, already on this uh, step on the second layer, we can find uh, lots of different bugs, interesting bugs, and fix it quickly. Um, in order to uh, not to wait until your uh, content is ready. So uh, again, uh, save money, save time, everybody is happy. OK. Let's go next. Uh, API testing tools. So uh, two tools are really, really uh, popular here. So um, the first one is Postman. I think everybody knows it. Uh, Postman um, is used in API testing, and it's used. Uh, the the only thing that is used only for RESTful API, so we cannot uh, check so API here, unfortunately. Uh, so the Postman tool allows to organize API requests into collections and folders, that share common like values across requests with environmental uh, variables. We can uh, write uh, script tests uh, with building node uh, GS based runtime. So pretty useful um, application. If we to talk about SOAP UI, uh, it, it, it's also a, a great tool. It's like leading open source across platform API testing tool. What is good about that one? Uh, that you can uh, test a REST, uh, RESTful API, you can test uh, SOAP API, so a great benefit here. So um, SOAP UI allows users uh, to execute like automated functional regression uh, and load tests on different web APIs, right? Um, but the naming, right? Uh, SOAP UI, and the, uh, it, it's kind of tricky, right? You start to think uh, that it only works for SOAP API, but then it's like a surprise. I can do RESTful too. And uh, you think that it's great too. So it's a uh, cross platform. Um, I have made uh, an interesting comparison uh, table here for you. So uh, if you look here, uh, the, the, uh, what is different, as I said, like uh, SOAP API testing, SOAP UI can do this, Postman no. Uh, both of them, they can uh, complete uh, automated assertion generation. Uh, both of them can uh, handle with moments. Um, the scripting languages are different for SOAP UI, it's Groovy, and for Postman, it's JavaScript. And test reports, uh, Postman supports only JSON and HTML formats. Uh, Whereas uh, SOAP UI supports the customization of uh, reports in various formats, but um, it's only for paid version, as I remember. OK, uh, then you have a question like what other API testing tools can be? And I have a table for you. So here uh, you can see other API testing tools. Um, most of them are for automation. Uh, which we are not going to talk about today. Uh, maybe for the next uh, tech talk. Okay, so here we have like Apigee, Assertable, Catalan Studio, Carrot DCL, uh, Ready API, Test Creed, Trusentis. And I have some uh, um, like points, uh, not about each one, but uh, about those I tried by myself. For example, Assertable. Uh, developers and testers widely like choose Assertable as one of the top API testing tools uh, with a high focus of reliability, considering it supports API tests at every step uh, that goes from continuous integration to the delivery pipeline. Um, what else good about Assertable? It uh, provides uh, users with very useful features. It supports integration with GitHub, Zapier, and Slack. Um, but it's pricey, yeah. Uh, Catalan Studio is a popular test automation tool for APIs, as well as web 
application, desktop, and mobile apps, uh, pretty universal. Uh, it supports help and REST uh, requests and uh, like provides uh, multiple uh, parameterization features and commands. Uh, what else? Uh, Catalan Studio follows a data-driven approach like DD. Uh, supports CICD integration and allows testers to execute automated and exploratory testing. It's a great tool. I tried one myself, by the way. Um, Character DCL, um, it's an open source framework for API testing. Um, Character framework is based on the Cucumber library. Um, with this tool, a tester can test web services by writing tests in a domain specific language like then, when, and. Uh, this tool is uh, specially designed for automated API testing. And um, to get this tool, uh, there is no need to have like a programming language, but the basic understanding like of HTTP, JSON, XML, XPath, and JSON pass will be an added advantage. I tried it uh, once and I liked it. Um, and uh, let me tell about Trusentis is one of the top choices uh, for those who wish to integrate it into the agile and DevOps cycle. Like it follows a uh, model based uh, test automation, which uh, like facilitates script maintenance and provides a first time for regression testing. Well, one of the primary pros is that it supports multiple protocols such as REST, SOAP, HTTP, MQ, GMS, uh, like IBM, MQ, etc. Another great plus uh, is that to send it allows end to end testing across like mobile, cross browser and package apps. So uh, just Try something by yourself and you see all uh, like benefits of using that. OK. Uh, so uh, uh, in this tech talk, I would like to show you how to create your first requests, like how to uh, use Postman, how to use SOAP UI and uh, um, before we do this, we need to discuss like what HTTP request methods um, we know, like or you don't know, and you want to know about that one. So first of all, um, I've collected uh, the most popular ones. So uh, get. So if we use get, such requests uh, I, I used to like a retrieve resource representation information only and we do not modify in any way as get requests like do not change the source state there are said to be safe methods had the http had methods request uh, like http headers from the server and they the like get and had a quite uh, similar but um when we use HTTP head method, we uh, get from the server. Remember, yeah, we have this like client server system. Um, so the server uh, returns headers without body. The only difference here. Uh, post, uh, also a very popular one. Um, we use post API uh, like to uh, to to create new uh, resource, right? Uh, we for example, we need to, to uh, create a file. Uh, is submitted to direct directory containing it, or we a, a role in, is submitted to a database table, so to create something, some information. Uh, put we use put API permanently to update an existing resource. For example, we, but we have a resource and we need to update uh, information, so we use put method, right? And delete uh, this, uh, requ uh, this um, request method uh, doesn't need body because we just delete the resource from the server. That's why uh, nobody here. Um, so. OK, so for example, we know that uh, when we want to 
have like API testing to, to provide uh, API testing, we need to send like a request. We need to use like some uh, HTTP request method, right? If we talk about REST, right? Um, okay, we do it, but then we need to get a response. Remember, yeah, that it's communication between client and server. We send request, we get response. And uh, we cannot uh, get a response like, hi, <laughs> I'm your response. <laughs> How are you? No, uh, we have special uh, like status codes, right? HTTP status codes. And here you can see like a gradation, like from uh, from informational success, redirection, client error and server error. So you understand that from positive to negative ones. And I have collected some for you. Uh, not all of them, because um, if I put all of them and describe all of them, uh, this tech talk will be for, I don't know, for three hours, for sure. <laughs> okay, so let's discuss most common, right? Uh, HTTP response statuses. So uh, if you look here, uh, we start from a uh, status code 200. Um, this is standard OK, like OK status code for a successful HTTP request. The response uh, that is returned in, is dependent on the request. For example, for GET request, the response will be included in uh, like in message body. For put POST request response, we'll include the resource that contains like as a result um, of the action. Status code uh, 201, this is a status code that confirms that the request was successful. And as a result, a new resource was created typically uh, this is a status code that is sent after a post put request. If we talk about status code 304, this is status code used for browser caching. Uh, so if the response has not been modified, the client uh, can continue to use like the same response, like the same cached version. Uh, for example, um, a browser can request uh, if a resource has been modified since a specific time. If it hasn't, the status code 304 is set. If it has been modified, a status code 200 is sent along with the resource. Uh, status code 400, uh, the server cannot understand and process the request due to a client error. Miss data, like a domain validation, uh, like and valid formatting are some examples that cause like uh, the status code for 100 to be sent. Status code for all one. Um, you also might see this um, pretty often. Um, this status code request occurs when authentication is required but has failed or not been provided. Uh, status code like uh, 404, the most common status, right? Uh, I even have like uh, a T-shirt with this, like 404. Um, this uh, occurs when the request is valid, but resource cannot be found on the server. It was deleted or something like that. Uh, um, status code uh, 500, also um, very uh, pretty common. Uh, commonly seen status codes by users, like the 500 uh, series codes are like the 400 series codes. Is, uh, in that they are true error codes, right? The status code 500 happens when the server cannot fulfill a request due to unexpected issue. Yeah, unexpected issue on the server. OK, maybe server died. Yeah, OK. So uh, we know now like uh, that uh, if we want to send a request, we need to choose HTTP request method. And when we send it, like we get a response and not just response, but with um, uh, some HTTP response status. OK. If we go to the next slide, let's 
See this one, like Postman um, description, right? Uh, so this is our tool. I will quickly, quickly uh, describe you what we have here. So Postman, remember, only uh, for uh, RESTful APIs. To test RESTful APIs. Okay. So uh, as you can see here, uh, we have uh, different buttons and uh, how to understand it. Uh, don't worry, I will do this for you. Just one moment. Okay, I hope you see this laser. So uh, what we have here, we have some buttons like uh, Home Workspaces Report to Explore, some functional buttons. Uh, we have Collections, APIs, Environments, Mock Service, Monitors, History, what we need, Collections, right? So as you remember, uh, what is good about Postman, uh, you can collect your tests in one and collect and keep your tests uh, in uh, like uh, your requests in collections and uh, why it's good it, it, it's better for um, like uh, for keeping everything together uh, for updating it uh, from time to time and it's just convenient just convenient okay so then uh, you have here and you where you can uh, click on it and uh, create new request. Uh, then you have um, import where you can import your collections, right? For example, uh, your developer has a collection and he, he send it to you and you can just import it and not just type in requests by yourself. Uh, pretty convenient. Uh, then you have uh, your main uh, window here. Uh, Post, it's where you can choose your HTTP request methods. Remember, we discussed the most common of them get, post, uh, put, delete, uh, and head. Um, also, here you can see your endpoint. Uh, then you have like here parameters, authorization headers, body, uh, pre request scripts, tests, and settings. Uh, what we need here is our uh, request body. Then you have like your uh, button sent where you click and send the request. Then here you can see another window where request uh, like uh, response uh, body come. So, so you have like your body, cookies, headers, test results. If you wrote any tests, uh, but we'll discuss a bit later. Um, and uh, what I like about this feature, like uh, you have different, uh, like uh, you can see your response in different formats. Like uh, uh, first of all, you can choose JSON or text, uh, or uh, sorry, HTML, and you can see it like in a pretty way, like just draw away, uh, preview, like uh, visualize, so on and so forth. And here you have like a, a special panel where you can see like status of your answer. Remember HTTP uh, like response, uh, like code, like uh, 200, uh, 201, 500, whatever. Uh, then you have like time, how long was it the request and you I can see like a size and you can save response. Uh, also, uh, you can save uh, the request. And uh, let me turn off this great laser and uh, let me show you. The exact demo. OK, so we, here we are. Um, I have a second mentor, so I need to put here. So uh, you can see here that I have some collections. Uh, so for example, I have a pet store, pet collection. Uh, for example, I have some requests like post, put, get, and delete. Uh, I have tried before uh, to create like a uh, post uh, request. So uh, it seems like I have already this data on server. So let's create get a request. Remember, get request is the safest uh, request and we just get data. We do not modify it. We just get it to see. So I don't need to send anybody, right? I don't use it. I just have my uh, method, request method. 
and then I have my endpoint. So I click send. Voila. I have something wrong, right? I have 404. What does it mean? Aha, uh -huh, not found. That means I don't have this data on the server. Mm -hmm. OK, what should I do? I should put it, right? I should post it. So I need to create it. So I go to post request. I use the same endpoint. I have the same ID and I have a name here, some data, right? So uh, here in this uh, request, I need body, right? Because it's post request. I create new information. So I send a request. OK, and we have a response here with our data. I can see here that it's uh, OK, like data is created 200. I see the time and I can hover the uh, my uh, point, uh, pointer here and I see uh, like uh, details. Then I can see the size. OK, great. Now I can try and get this information because we uh, posted some data. OK, let's try again. Yeah. You see, in get response, I just get information. I do not modify it, so I can see it in body. So what does it mean pretty? You can see this in pretty way, like in JSON format. I can uh, choose raw and it will be like this. I can use like review, it will be like this and visualize. We don't have this here. OK, uh, for example, I want it in HTML, so it will be like this. Pretty raw preview. Nothing's changed, right? OK. Um, yeah, great. What if I want to like delete a bit, right? I don't need it. Like I, I want to delete this. Um, so we need a special uh, HTTP method delete uh, endpoint with our ID. Remember when we uh, Posted, we had ID 1010. But what if I want to try and see what happens if I put a wrong uh, ID in an endpoint? So we send it. And we don't have anything in response except 404 in not found because we don't have such information. OK, let's try with the correct one. You see, 200, it's OK. We deleted some information. Let's let's try and check if it was deleted. Find the pet, the same ID, send. 404 not found because we deleted this information. We don't have it on the server and it saves us. OK, so that was like a postman. OK, uh, you have a question, right, uh, about SOAP UI, for example. But when uh, before we start as, uh, checking like uh, or uh, before I start demonstrating it, uh, remember, uh, let's discuss what is it like? How does it work and what should we know about this one? So. Uh, remember that uh, SOAP uh, uh, API is a kind of uh, old way um, uh, of APIs. Uh, yeah, kind of API. So uh, here we need to use XML when we talk about SOAP API. Uh, so what is it XML, right? It's extensible markup language. Uh, like HTML, right? Uh, like it has a structure, right? Uh, to, to like uh, storage, uh, to store and transmit data. Uh, what is good about that one? Um, like it's widely used in web services. Um, it's very easy to parse and generate. Uh, it provides like a strong support for Unicode characters. 
Um, what else could? Uh, XML defines a set of rules for like encoding documents in a format which are human friendly. Uh, uh, almost uh, all major programming languages they support XML due to its like language independent data format. As you can see, XML document uh, is formed as element tree. Uh, an XML tree uh, starts uh, at the root element and branches from like the root to child elements. You can see like it is it, a like a uh, structured tree uh, of data. Uh, all elements can have like sub elements or how it's called child like elements. The term uh, parent, child and sibling are uh, used like to describe the relationships between elements. So parents have children, children have parents, like yeah. Siblings are children on the same level, like brothers, sisters, we could call it like that. Uh, all elements can have text content and attributes like, for example, uh, what can be text contact, uh, like Harry Potter, great data. Uh, attribute like category, Okay, or category like uh, this, like this. Um, so what uh, what elements it contain? Uh, first of all, envelope. You can see here it, it's written on a uh, slide, like it's an obligatory root element that translates the XML document and defines the beginning and the end of the message. Then we have header. It's an optional item which contains information about the message being sent. Uh, then we have body. Uh, it contains the XML data com uh, comprising the message being sent. Uh, then uh, fault. It provides information on errors that occurred right during message processing. It can be or it cannot be. Um, then uh, and. Uh, the uh, exact endpoint we have as the SDL, like all web service description language. Yeah, uh, it's an XML based definition language. It's used for describing like uh, the functionality of the swap based web service. Uh, also, the CDL files are central to test uh, swap based services. Like swap UI uses VSDL files to generate like test request assertions. OK, uh, let's see it on our. Slide. The exact uh, like program to swap UI looks like this. So let's uh, see what we have here. So first of all, functional buttons like files, project uh, suit, uh, then a uh, case that tools desktop help. Then we have uh, this panel is empty. We can create empty uh, project. Uh, as for like Postman, we had collections. As for SOAPI, we have something, some kind of collections, but it called it is called projects. Also, you can keep all your tests there. Then you can create a SOAP request. A request uh, rest we can import uh, your project uh, we can save all uh, we have like preferences and proxy we don't need it right now so here are your projects with your uh, uh, all uh, available requests then you have here this window your request in xml format then this window is a response and you have two options to see it in as XML, like the same as here, the same structure, like three kinds. Uh, and then you can see it's raw in raw format. Uh, raw format, I prefer more because you have uh, extra information here about like a uh, response uh, status code uh, and also headers. So uh, more detailed information. OK, uh, then you have this uh, 
um, panel where you can see like uh, buttons to send the request uh, and a link to get methods. This is the so So let's see it in real life. So here's your program. Here's your tool. And I have a demo here for you. So first of all, you have the start page, also useful like to start new cell project, new REST project, some supports, blah, blah. And let's start from uh, swap. Uh, remember, we have here project with our request. For example, we have request number one, and it says here swap. And we have here our XML. And for example, uh, we have envelope rate, uh, which is most important element. Uh, don't forget to like open uh, tags. These are tags, these small uh, things here. Uh, you need, if you open the tag, you need to close it. What happens if I forget? For example, I forgot to close it. Let's try. I don't have a uh, closing tag. I try to send it. Let's try. I click here. Some magic. And when we, we have a response, 400 bad request, something went wrong, right? OK, when I put it back, I close my tag and I send it again. 200 success. So don't forget to close all tags. When you have open it, don't forget to close it. So um, for example, here we have like a, a calculator uh, and methods called add uh, and we need to uh, put and add some data. For example, I have five here, five here. Uh, and when I send the request, it calculates and sends me uh, their uh, response. In raw format, it looks like this. You need to scroll and see the result and find it. So add result 10, right? It's not very convenient, right? So uh, when I click XML, it's easier. We have a structure and we see exact uh, result here. Ten. OK, for example. I want to check it uh, if it accepts any letters. What happens if I put any letters? For example, five plus blah, blah, blah. So a center request. Oopsie, we have something wrong here. So it says 500. Remember, it's something very bad. So internal server error. Something went, uh, something went wrong. So if we will see it in XML format, it says the answer. Like read parameters. This answer says, and we see here fault. So in, with this tag, remember, it shows the er error. Something went wrong. OK. We understand that it doesn't understand letters, so we need to use only numbers. OK, let's try with number again. It's 200. It's OK because we used uh, correct uh, parameters. So 5 plus 7, 12. Um, it was an example we swap. OK. But remember that swap can do uh, the same uh, with uh, a, like we can use swap UI to test RESTful APIs. So here is example. We just need to change the project. OK, so we done we swap. And we have here rest project number one. And I have here uh, the same uh, like pet store. 
and we have a request. So we can close our swap project and open our REST tool. You can see here that we have like a method uh, where we can choose our HTTP uh, request methods. Uh, we have endpoint, we have like uh, our resource and remember get, just get information. So we don't need uh, to use uh, any, uh, like we don't need to use body. We just send the request. So let's try. Remember we deleted, right? What will it show us? Okay, we have an error because pet was not found. Okay. Okay, so here we can see, yeah. So uh, we need to create the pet, right? We need to post data. You use it like is it was in post man, like. You need to use body. Application JSON, you put it, let's try. Yeah, we created, uh, we created some new data, we post it, and now we can check it. Remember, nobody. We put our ID, get, send, get the request. Sorry, get the response. Uh, we cannot use it. Uh, we cannot see it as XML, obviously, because uh, this response is in JSON format. We can uh, see it in JSON format. In HTML, actually, no. And here we have the raw format with detailed information, like 200, it's okay. And just some headers. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, you, you see that both tools are really uh, helpful for API testing. Uh, they both can do great things um, and I will just show you more uh, further. And uh, I prefer both of them. For example, uh, for some um, like projects, I prefer PostMemo for some software UI. Uh, you see, it depends on uh, like uh, it depends on the project and what do you need to achieve in your like API testing and what API do you use actually, RESTful or SOAP. Remember that Postman cannot do SOAP API testing. Okay. Uh, and uh, I have some uh, life hacks for you. I have collected uh, them among my colleagues and they were so kind to share this experience, like their experience with me. And uh, that's why I decided to share it with you uh, also so you can use it. Uh, for example, my colleague like uh, Dmitry Voronov, if you are here, hi. Uh, thank you for a great, the great tip. Um, he uses variables during API testing to generate random values and handle any scenario in API testing. It's a great, great tip actually, and I have uh, like a chance to show you. It is here. What does it mean variables? We use it for creating dynamic uh, like data to like uh, improve API testing to make it easier, faster. And uh, you can see it here. For example, you have a body. Uh, you have a post method, you have your endpoint. And what does it mean uh, variables? So they look like this. Uh, where to create them? You open your collection. And for example, you need to use random email and you create it here. 
using postman tool you just use this uh, snippets and they can help you creating so if you want to create a random example email you just write this uh, script prayer request script and you create uh, uh, like a dynamic data and how does it work so for example you use this method like replacing it's uh, already in postman and uh, you don't need to like to think a lot about that and how to create you have already it in postman i think it's a wow feature it's a great one so let's see how does it work for example we have a post uh methods request and point and in our body uh, when we send the request I want to use like a random example email so it was generated by uh, like uh, like by postman I don't want to create by myself right I want to make it faster and I just put this here and I send let's see what will come so in the response, in the response, we see email. I didn't put this email, right? I did not create it. Postman did it for myself. Okay, let's see if it is random. Remember uh, this email? Let's send again. You see, email is changed, so it's randomly created email it's a great feature thank you dima okay let's see next one vera lebedeva also my colleague uh, was uh, so kind uh, to share your tip she uses test section during api testing to check that api works as supposed to so let's see it with postman uh, we have the same like uh request post request and we have tests so we put test here uh, what does it mean test uh like here also you can create a test using snippets if you see if you uh open postman uh and see what snippets are here and you can see status code is 200 we need to check that status code in the response which comes is 200 for example um okay i just click it and voila i have a test so let's try that uh again so i send the request okay and see here in response like a uh, window uh, i have a uh, like a point like a test results i click it and i see that it fails huh why let's discuss like let's analyze so response time um, is less than 200 uh, uh, seconds right so uh, see time here says 621 but in our tests we wrote that it should be 200 right even less than 200 you see that uh, it, it failed because the time was more uh, for like uh, response time was bigger than we wanted so what can you do with this result you go to your uh, developers and uh, please do something with it change api make it better so the response time was uh, so the response times would be uh, better. Okay, for example, if I put, uh, for example, I put uh, response time is less than, okay, like this. Pass, yeah, because it's obviously is less than one thousand. Okay, so also thank you, Vera, for great tip. 
Uh, Sergey also uh, is my colleague. Uh, he just stores uh, all API requests in collections uh, for like easier updating from time to time. Uh, so these are main life hacks in API testing, and um, I uh, used uh, most of them. But for like the 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 better tip, I think variables. OK, so I hope uh, you like this uh, short uh, like uh, theoretical part with demo. Uh, and finally, finally, your favorite part, you have a chance to ask me questions, but I need help from my colleague Gohar. Gohar will help me. Uh, she will read the questions, so Gohar. Yes, uh, hello. So, hi again. Do, hi again. Do you hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Yulia, for a great presentation. It was wonderful. Uh, please, uh, if you enjoy, send to Yulia uh, any pages. Um, do not hesitate. So, let me start with the questions. Uh, so, Sopan, he's asking. Uh, is it good to start IP automation without IP specifications? Um, actually, for this tech talk, we don't discuss uh, like API testing automation like in details, but um, I have some thoughts about that one. So actually, <laughs> it's a kind of great <laughs> question. Um, uh, you cannot start API testing automation without um, knowing basic automation like <laughs> skills. But um, if to talk about automation, <coughs> API testing, um, you can read a lot, you can use YouTube and start uh, with writing your first test. Yeah, but the main point here to know how to automate testing. First of all, and then you can start API automation. Testing. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a lack of time, but uh, we see that you have a, a lot of questions. Let me ask you the last question. Uh, Yulia, do you think that getting Postman collection from developers is a good practice? The question was from anonymous uh, people, person. Oh. OK, thank you for a great question, actually. Uh -huh. um, yeah, um, like I had a project uh, where I needed to provide like API testing, but that time I was junior and I didn't have like a, a strong knowledge how to do this, uh, how to keep collections. Even I, I, I just tried by myself to, like uh, to create like some get uh, like a request uh, and something like that. And then I, I just needed help. And my uh, one of the developers, he helped me. He had his own like collection of API requests and he just shared this knowledge with me and it helped me a lot and I could uh, like handle a great API testing and found a lot of bugs. <laughs> That's why it's a it's a good practice. Why not? If they can help you, why not? OK, uh, thank you. Thank you. As I mentioned, it was the last question, uh, but we have a, a lot of questions uh, from the chat, from the QA se section in the platform. So for other questions, I will definitely reply you soon as soon as possible in our social networks in uh, Instagram and in Telegram. Please follow thank us you. there. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Julia. Thank you, Gohar, for helping me. But it's not the end. Don't uh, don't shut it down. I'm still here. I want you uh, to uh, invite you for the next tech talk, which will be provided by my uh, great colleague Sofia Pustavat. Um, she will tell us about what user stories are, structure, what to pay attention to, how to write test cases for user stories. 
and uh, she will show you examples from real work experience. Uh, this tech talk will be on 27th July at uh, three o'clock like uh, GMT plus six and here you can see the link for this uh, tech talk. So do not hesitate, go and register. OK, and here you must uh, might wonder how to find us QA Hub in social media. First of all, we have Instagram, we have Telegram and we have email. So don't hesitate. Go to our uh, social media, follow us and give us likes. Yeah. Hopefully you will write this links. Yes, we and already thank sent. You. Yes. Thank you so much go for helping. Thank you guys for uh, visiting my tech talk. I was so happy and still happy to share all knowledge with you. I am so happy to see all your interest and questions and hopefully see you for next time. Bye. Thank you. See you in next tech talk. Thank you, Yulia, for great presentation.